This stuff here was also stuff I pulled out of that scrap metal bin that he let me add in. No charge, no extra charge. Um, another grinding vise. This one is en engraved with the uh, maker's name. The gentleman's name was S, first initial S, last name W O J C I K. Wojcik. It's a good Polish name by the sounds of it. It's kind of a neat design. It's a little bit different. So how are we locking this? Huh. Well, it looks like maybe this is broken. So there's a broken off piece in there. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure how this was supposed to work. That's too bad. Good thing it was free. So the uh, the other one here is a Eron, which I've had a few things with this name on them. I think this is a Japanese company, if I recall correctly. This one seems fine. Just a nice little drill press vise. And then these are handles for metal stamping. So you put letter or number sets in here like almost typeset and then once they're in here they can be clamped into this handle which this handle I think is missing something that would actually allow that to keep them captive in there okay which is probably why it was in the scrap bin this one actually not only does it look like it's uh, not missing the parts but it's even still got some type in it well, this is, gives you an idea what this does. So this is the handle. I want you to put the type in. You would hold this down and strike this to engrave, to stamp that into the, the metal. And these two vices here also came out of the scrap bin. This is a Stanley. It's kind of a plain one, but still serviceable. Took some serious damage from the grinder right here on the corner, but you know, it's free. And then this one looks like a palm grin. I didn't really look at it too closely. I just spotted it and saw it was a tilting style drill press vise and thought, well, yeah, definitely want to grab that. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that I could see the name on this. No, it's just a rough spot on the casting. The only markings are right here. There's a marking in degrees for tilting it. Other than that, I don't see any markings on it. Um, it's missing the handle. Again, no big deal. It seems like that has a little more play than typical on these. Oh, I can just feel that plate, the retaining plate on the bottom there is just loose. It's an interesting design. They left a hole here so that when the jaws are closed up completely, it, it'll the hole aligns up with the screw that you tighten to uh, rectify that problem. If anything, I just tightened it up a little too much now. Yeah, that doesn't move as well as it should. Well, now I know why this one was in the scrap pile. I already wasted too much time with that thing. Here's some more stuff I found laying around. Uh, this is a nice Sterrett vernier. Uh, so this would be a, considered a 12 inch vernier. The scale goes up to 14, but it's really only usable up to 12, I think, is the way that these work. Still even got the original uh, packing, little packing certificate thing in there. It's actually pretty darn clean. Unfortunately, these don't bring as much as the use. This is on number 123. So this is marked hardened and stabilized master bar. So this is a little bit better series than... Uh, just the regular straight verniers, which don't have the satin chrome finish and are a little harder to read and tend to be earlier. It's got the original case too, which is kind of nice. This is a pair of NSK 12 inch dial calipers that was sitting there that were in really, really bad shape. And originally I was going to leave them, but I knew he wasn't going to really consider these of any value. He even, you know, made a comment about that they're pretty much junk. Uh, this tape is to cover the fact that they had, uh, basically used a laser and cut out the company name in here and kind of a silhouette so um, to protect the privacy of the company I covered that up but you can see what's in here is the actual NSKs 
And the reason why they're junk is, well, they, well, <laughs> funny thing is they actually still work and they repeat and they seem to be pretty decent mechanically. The crystal's cracked here. Um, they're really dirty and we're missing the little bar that goes here to retain this uh, depth attachment so they keep keeps flopping around but I took it anyways because I thought well quite frankly um, I might need a case I have some of those Fowler dial calipers that don't have cases and they might fit in here just fine and I knew he didn't value those very much it's just some random uh, sheets of sandpaper that were laying there you let me take for free I'm not going to turn those down Here's a 5C collet block. Typically these come in a set. You get the hex and the square. Maybe this was just a loner sitting there. But I did find the... Actually, this was in the scrap. Now that I think of it, I remember this was in the scrap bin too. I pulled this out of the scrap bin. And then I even found uh, one of the collet nuts to go with it. So um, one of my guys will probably buy that. Um, and then what's in these cases here are the remnants of some of these stamping sets that I was talking about so you could see that's why I wanted you know to grab the extra ones of these that he had laying around because there might be a, a case where um, the right one for these sets well, these are tiny so these are really really tiny alright so here's one with this style here this is a custom made stamp they made for some company so this will only stamp out that company's name so that's scrap what the heck that is so this box says this was from the ideal marking products ideal engraving company of orange new jersey all right so this is just the tip of the iceberg uh so this whole box is filled with these stamp sets so i don't want this video to be too long as i go through all of these uh, boxes here but uh, all i want you to know is that these are all stamping sets um, most of them are from the uh, ideal engraving company of uh, orange new jersey and basically what these are is this type set like this and then what's missing from this one is the holder that goes here and along with all of these boxes and all of these boxes which many of them have some some of them have quite a bit in them for type and some of them have just a few and there's different sizes and everything uh, so it's going to take me a while to probably sort through and figure out what I'm going to do with a lot of these but um, just wanted to show you this one because I thought it was kind of neat this one it looks like it's a really early one it's almost like some kind of a Bakelite colored case it's almost like a tortoiseshell design in it. Uh, it's embossed. Uh, it says a seal product. And this is by a company called Model Mark. This one is fairly complete. It's got the holders with it. So I have no idea what... what uh, I'll have to look up and do some research, figure out valuation on that. I have one made by Pryor, P-R-Y-O-R, that I keep. Uh, so I'll, I don't know if I'll, maybe I'll keep this fancy one here and get rid of the Pryor one, which is a smaller box like this. So anyways, let me clear all of this out of the way and we'll move on. A lot of this stuff get, ended up getting thrown in as freebies. The building had been sold. They were vacating. They needed to move on, so... Uh, this light, which <laughs> I've never seen this done before. So we got a, uh, a Chinese magnet with a, uh, this is that flex hose that snaps together. It's used, commonly used for uh, coolant systems, you know, like on your mill or your lathe. And somebody, I actually don't even know how this is attached to this. Is this just screwed on? This I gotta see, because did somebody thread this on here? Yeah, it looks like that's threaded on. Ran the wire through it and everything. I've never seen one of these turned into a lamp. 
so we'll put a nice LED bulb in there and it actually probably won't be that bad of a lamp for something. Worst case scenario is I just take it apart and use it for the cooling hose. Although it's got a threaded end on it now. Is a it's a case for a stare at 120 caliper, but it's got another old brown and sharp in here. Again, this is uh, very dirty, but actually this one's nice and smooth and works fine. Better than the other ones, actually. Huh. So I'll probably keep this case until I get a 120 that has no case. Oh, a square. Stare it. Looks, uh, looks like it's a number 20. Yeah, it is. There it is. Number 20 stare at square. Huh, somebody was just asking me for if I had any more squares. Emson, Taiwan. China? Oh, this has got to be quality. Oh, yeah. All these deals here, multi-bit sets. I thought this was just kind of neat. It's all antique stamping. Uh... You know, like uh, for like a town seal at a town clerk's office or maybe a uh, notary, something like that. It's got paint, white paint overspray on this side, but this side's got the original black paint with the nice little gold gilded trim. Kind of neat. I don't know if these have any value. Ooh! Well, there's one for the blooper reel. I had my thumb like that. Just pinched this. Oh, that's going to be a hell of a blood blister. What a dummy. Sharpening stone. Hmm. EDM. They did have some EDM machines at this place. <laughs> I'm still laughing about doing that to my thumb. Uh, this is a, um, Intermark, uh, EDM tooling finish comparator. So I've had metal ones of these used for like, uh, grinding. This is an EDM finish comparator. I've never seen an EDM one and it's plastic. Here's another attachment from a pentagraph machine, pantograph, pantograph machine. Teddy Pentagraph's machine. When you fire that machine up, ladies in the front row throw their panties up on the stage. No, no one gets that reference. I guarantee you that. Oh, here's the handle. I think this is for that Suburban Magvice. Here is the, I think the only micrometer I found in the whole place. This old, I think it's brown and sharp. Yep, old brown and sharp. It's actually a pretty decent micrometer. It feels really nice still. It's just filthy. The little plastic lock still works. This is supposed to be, I think, a friction thimble, though, and I think it's locked up, but... It's got carbide faces on it. Zero to one mic. Nice, cheap mic for somebody. Uh, so here's the... 818 automatic center punch is what this case says, but what was in here is a regular steric punch and this automatic center punch which I do not believe is steric it is much uh no it is it is an 818 I I don't think I've ever had a steric automatic center punch with an all aluminum body so that is interesting with the original box too well, that's going to be a nice little piece. Oh, it says right on there. Adjustable stroke with aluminum handle. How do you like them apples? And then he had uh, this box sitting there. It says number 70B, points only. And what these are, are these are replacement sharp points for Sterrett Scribers. Now the funny thing is, there's two different sizes in here, so this box is supposed to have six in it, but I got a feeling that some of these are for a different size. All right, we're almost to the finish on this one.
Well, here's a bunch of the uh, other stuff I got from that same pick. Here's a general drill index with a, just a few drill bits left in it, but I just kind of like the box. and I know I've got plenty of spare drill bits I can fill this back up with, and it's got a little tapping chart built right into the top there. Tap size, drill size, tap drill, blah, blah, blah. This was just sitting there on the workbench, and he threw it in for free. All of these boxes here, including even under here, these are all stamps. They're, I think they're all from the uh, Ideal Company of New Jersey. They're these type of letter stamps, the type you hold by hand. I think you can actually put these in holders too, but anyways, there's letter sets, there's number sets. Um, some of them are, like this one says reversed or reverse. So that's interesting. Here's a couple of uh, different brand. These are Sterling. This is a gallon of um, metalworking fluids. This is Trimsol general purpose emulsion. Uh, so I believe this is um, coolant for the grinder. And I think this is uh, concentrated, so I think you can actually add water to it, but uh, I'm not positive. But uh, this is a brand new gallon of this stuff gave me because they were going to have to probably pay to get rid of it. Again, more small sets here. Here's a really small set. Then there was this little chuck mounted on this plate. And it looks like this is a number 5404 Skinner Chuck, made in the USA, from uh, New Britain, Connecticut. And then I happened to spot this box on a shelf, and I saw one of these regulators sticking out of the top. And I asked him about them, and he says, oh, he says, we were going to throw those out. You could take them. So he gave me the whole box, and there's uh, four of these regulators with the built-in uh, traps on them. So, actually, that's, so there's two complete ones. This is one that's missing the bottom part. It's a small one. And then there's a bunch of just copper fittings in here. And uh, that's a foot off of something. It's just some junk. But, uh, oh, and then this uh, nice wrench was in here for grinding wheels. And I believe this little sign plate was also part of this pick, which... I have not yet checked it out. A lot of this stuff has rust on it, light rust on it, because they were using it in their uh, uh, EDM operations. So I just uh, opened up this plate, and I could see a label there that's covered with a ton of uh, grinding dust and dirt. Well, whatever was on there for a name just wiped right off but there is a part number stamped in there and a serial number so it's an nsp 136 so it's interesting this almost looks like it might have been a suburban label but this actually uh an sp 136 comes back as a uh, part number for a suburban tool sign plate but i can't find one with the nsp designation but, I mean, even the location of this label is the same on the uh, on the new version of this sign plate from Suburban. So, yeah, I'm leaning towards it being possibly a uh, strong possibility that is, in fact, a Suburban. And the reason why it matters is because if this is a, a, a genuine Suburban sign plate, new, uh, this is over $700 in their catalog. And... Traverse Tool Company makes one that they call the TTC 136, which is uh, basically their import knockoff version. Let's say China. And they want like like 250 or 300 bucks for that. So it's missing the rear fence. I'll still give somebody a deal on that, though. All right, moving right along. This is pretty much the remainder of the stuff in that initial lot. And uh, what these are, these are what are called graving tools. So a person who does, you know, this kind of work is an engraver. Well, so these are not called engraving tools for whatever reason. They're called graving tools. I don't know why. 
but uh, you know he had a whole bunch of these and initially I didn't think much of them but I figured oh what the heck so I took them and come to find out actually some of my guys already bought some of these and they're 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 liking them um, and then what's in this box over here which I didn't even know that they sold these but uh, well, that box is empty but some of these boxes are pretty full um, what's in these boxes are replacement uh, cutters so those are really small ones there and these are uh, Swiss made so like these say FL Grobet, Grobet or G-R-O-B-E-T however you say that uh, Grobet File Company of America uh, Carl's that New Jersey so I think some of these other ones I saw were Swiss so these say uh, one dozen square gravers polished number two it's funny that's like French Bur Burins Burins Caras Police Police blah 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 There's some files mixed in here too but it's mainly it's replacement so kind of like a file where you have a wooden handle, you put the file tang in the handle. I guess you just take these out and replace them over time. So this is pretty much all replacements. And then we got some more over here. This one's really pretty full. See, Grobay, Grobay Swiss. So I don't know if like this is imported by the American company and they're Swiss made or what so these actually have I don't know they say something on them. I can't make it out but apparently these have some value to them too there's even a stone in here for sharpening them this is an unusual one lambkin so we got all that oh the other thing I wanted to show you in here was um so there's these things, which, um, they're, they're Silly Putty. Does anybody remember Silly Putty? I don't even know if they still make this. I think you can still get it. Like, I think there's some retro toy stores online that still have it made. But, uh, the putty. So the putty is a reoccurring theme in this graving stuff. There's several of these. Here's an Easter egg. But again, instead of candy being hidden in it for Easter, there's this putty in here. So, and you guys do engraving work? What would the putty be good for? Does it help do something? Does it help with your hands or something? Or do you put the putty in here so that maybe this, doing this all the time, doesn't cause you to get a blister? I don't know. All right, so then after I bought all that stuff, I cut a deal on two machines they had there that were bench top machines small enough for me to carry, so that's why I was willing to take them on. And this was there on the bench, so uh, this goes with those machines. So I'm gonna show you those in a minute. But essentially what's in here, and see if you guys can guess what I'm gonna show you that I bought. Um, there are basically two different sizes of collets. Look at that unusual collet. What on earth could that be for? I don't think these collet, I don't think these wrenches belong to that. But anyway, so I grabbed this box because I had to go back to pick up the machines because I didn't have my truck that day. So, this is a diamond. So, that's another little clue right there. We've got a little industrial diamond. All right. Specialty wrenches. So, let's go mobile because I've got... I didn't have room down here in the shop for those yet. So, I've got those in my outside storage. But that stays so hot in the sun that um, condensation is not really a problem. So, let's take a walk over there and... Get a gander at these things so this is one of the two machines that i uh i just couldn't resist picking up uh, i got a really good deal on it so um 
I guess I'll, I'll turn this around in a minute. But what this is, is this is a tool and cutter grinder. Uh, it's a smaller one that they were using for sharpening um, styluses and things like that on uh, pantograph machines and other engraving machines in the shop. So this particular one is a Lars Machine Incorporated of Racine, Wisconsin. Um, so this is the logo, this LM. And then down here, this little plaque is kind of interesting. Manufactured in the USA by a member of the National Machine Tool Builders Association. You know, not unlike a, a Gordon or a, a Gorton or Deckel machine, same basic principle. Uh, this is a collet holder right here. There's actually a collet in there right now. So your collets sit right in here. And that thing I just dropped is a nut acts as like a draw bar. Then we have this wheel has some holes for indexing. I'm wondering whether or not there weren't other wheels that you could change out on this. Don't know. This uh, looks almost like a nail or something that they stuck in there. I'm sure that that probably was something a little easier to deal with before, but that allows this to unlock. I think this is supposed to spin. Might take a little bit of cleaning to sort that out. And then this on the side here, this wheel, when you unlock this lock down here, this allows you to precisely move this in and out. And some of you guys may have already spotted it in the background, but, but there's the other one that I picked up from them, and that's an even smaller one, okay? And it's got the same basic design, but this one is a Heinrich Deckel of Munchen uh, DRGM. So I think that means that that's a very early Deckel grinder. And guys who know tool and cutter grinders know that the Deckels are pretty nice machines, I guess. That's kind of a neat little machine. That might be worthy of uh, maybe uh, cleaning up and restoring or something. This has got a nice little uh, spring-loaded part that reaches into the detents on this wheel. Oh, I almost forgot. There's actually three other things in here that I picked up uh, from that place. I got three stools. This little shop stool, that square one behind it, and then you can just kind of see back there I've got uh, the round one. I kind of like those vintage shop stools, so uh, I paid 30 bucks for the three of them. And with that, we're going to bring this episode to a close. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Flea Market Finds Tool Finds. And if you did, please hit the like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Take care.